The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say immediately that it is going to rain, and so it does. And when you notice that the wind is blowing from the south, you say it is going to be hot, and so it is. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Why do you not judge for yourself what is right? If you are to go with your opponent before a magistrate, make an effort to settle the matter on the way. Otherwise, your opponent will turn you over to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the constable, and the constable throw you into prison. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A number of years ago, a dear friend of mine was facing a personal crisis. And she was returning to her faith in the midst of this crisis, seeking God. And she was, for the first time, really learning how to pray. So she took me aside and said, "Um, Okay, Father James, I've got a question. She said, when I'm praying, sometimes I do the normal prayers, but other times I do other prayers. I said, said, okay, well, what are you talking about? What's the normal prayers? She said, you know the stuff that we memorize, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory be... Okay. But then she said, sometimes I just talk to God like you and I are talking to each other. Is that okay? I said, yes, that's very much okay. In fact, we very much encourage that, right? Talking to God, having an actual relationship with God. Now, I've been speaking all this week about the notion of loneliness and about overcoming this loneliness through friends on earth and friends above. On Monday, I spoke of the need for true friends. On Tuesday, the need for friends within the church. Wednesday, the need for the church above, that is the saints. And yesterday, the need for the greatest friend of God, our Blessed Mother. Today, I'd like to speak to you all about the notion of friendship with God as such. Friendship that we can have with the Lord. Now, we sometimes take this for granted, right? I mean, I was raised as a Catholic, taken for granted that I could be a friend of the Lord. Taken for granted that I could talk to God. After all, my great-grandparents talked to God, my grandparents talked to God, my parents talked to God, I talked to God. Sure, isn't this something everybody does? Apparently not. And we might take this for granted even as Christians, that we can be friends with God. With many other religions, this would be absolutely unheard of, right? Think about Islam. In Islam, God is all-powerful. He's incredibly other. There is no way to enter into a real relationship with God in Islam that would be foolish. With Judaism, we begin to move towards the notion of having a relationship with God. When we search the Old Testament, we see that people like Abraham could be friends with God. People like King David, friends with God. But a true friendship with God is only possible with God coming to us, right? With God taking on our human flesh. And the unique Christian claim that Christ, that God Himself, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, humbled Himself so much, became lower than the angels, and took on our flesh and blood, means that we can now be friends with God. Which again is a unique Christian claim. Only through Christ can we become friends with God in a real sense. Talking to my friend again, who was coming back to her faith, I talked to her about it. I said, run to the arms of Christ. And she told me later on, I never thought I could do that. That's incredible. Again, a real friendship with God. Now, back on Monday, I spoke about three types of friendship that Aristotle had given us. The first, that friendship of utility, like your friendship with your barista, right? Friendship meaning that you just have goods that they want and, you, and they have goods that you want and you're exchanging. Also the friendship of pleasure, that is a friendship that you might have something in common with somebody, 
like if we just built our friendship on our mutual love for the Golden State Warriors. We'd be friends, but not really. Now, we can't be friends with God in either of those senses, right? If we're friends with God in just that first sense, like God has something that I want, and I'll turn to him when I want something, that's kind of like a little kid's relationship with God. I want to pray real hard to get the fire truck on Christmas, right? But unfortunately, many people never go beyond that in their friendship with God. Never go beyond, I need God when I'm in a crisis, and that's when I'll turn to him to make things better, and then I can go away. And of course, that second kind of love, a friendship with, Christ, with God, would be kind of strange too, right? Just one thing that I may have in common with God, and that's what we'll dwell on. No. With God, it demands that we're all in, because he's all. Now, today is Friday, and Friday is traditionally the day that we speak about the sacred heart of Jesus, the day that we talk about the open side of Christ, and that's a great symbol of God's love for us, God's heart being opened, having the ultimate sacrifice, and that being the kind of love that he's making available to us, the kind of friendship he's making to us, always open. And it begins with God's initiative, the fact that we can even be friends with him in the first place. But what we have to do is respond to that initiative. Respond to that open heart of Christ. And when we respond to that open heart of Christ, loving God just because He is God, that is when we enter into a special kind of love called charity. Charity. We often get that uh, term confused, right? We think charity is something that we do nice to somebody on the street or when we help out at the Lima Center. Those indeed are forms of charity. But... Charity in its absolute sense is our love of God in that true friendship way. Now, there's no end to charity and there's no end to the love of God because His love is infinite. But ours is not. And if we are to grow in love with Him, we need to take steps to respond to that offer of grace that He's given to us. So how do we do this? Well, we must do things then that are on common ground with God's love for us, which means we must do acts of love ourselves. So just three little acts of love then to sort of ending up this homily. The first is to grow in friendship with God by doing good to each other. Knowing that God has infinite love for his creation. And when we love our brothers and sisters and do good works for our brothers and sisters, we begin to love God. Now, a lot of people, though, stop at this point. They say, sure, Father, you know, I'm a good person. I try to be nice to people. Well, the Lord didn't say, be nice to one another as I've been nice to you, right? We call this the heresy of nicism, right? The Lord said, love one another as I have loved you, which means sticking with the people who are irritating, loving them too, loving those whom the world deems unlovable or not worth it. As we go then further into these acts of love, we have to acknowledge that sometimes we fail, especially when it's difficult to love. This is why, thanks be to God, we have the great sacrament of confession. Now I know that I've been talking to a number of the priests about we work with married couples a lot. And it's difficult, right, when we work with married couples because oftentimes it's spent sifting out where are the difficulties, who is at fault with what, and how can we work towards reconciliation. But with our relationship with God, it's a lot more easy, right? Because if there's a problem with that relationship, guess whose fault it is, right? But thanks be to God, he's given us a sacrament to return to him. That's what confession is for. When we go before the Lord and lay bare our souls and talk about the ways we have failed to love, the ways that we have failed to love our brothers and sisters and to love God for all the good things he has done to us, the ways we have uh, have not been thankful. And, of course, especially confessing any times where we have willfully broken that relationship with God, willfully turned away from him, especially in the awfulness of mortal sin. So, like I said, doing good to one another by loving each other, repenting when we go astray, and number three, Taking time with God alone. Alone. 
Now you might be saying, okay, Father James, I thought you were preaching against loneliness this whole week. What are you talking about? Taking time with God alone. Well, yes. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Because actually, one of the cures to loneliness is learning how to love in solitude. Solitude. But brothers and sisters, solitude is not loneliness. Solitude is not just me being alone and being sad. Solitude is being alone with God. Learning how to love God, which means spending time with Him. Spending time with Him alone. And then those of you who are called to the married state know this, right? Especially after a baby is born, what do you have to schedule? Date nights, right? To make sure that you still like the other person, right? To make sure that you can still spend some time with them. The same thing with the Lord. And brothers and sisters, in our crazy schedule, you know what this often means. Especially if we're going to spend time in solitude. It means, and this is a little helpful practical hint, we've got to schedule it, right? As our life is often determined by this device, I make sure that I put into this device my time with God, my time on retreat, my time in my holy hour, my time for prayer. Set aside like you would for any other appointment. And don't shirk this one. It's important, right? That we learn in solitude to listen. To listen to the voice of the Lord. To listen to the voice of God who doesn't normally speak through earthquake, wind, or fire, but through the still, small voice. This is why we come to adoration. This is why we come to the Mass, especially the daily Mass where we can be quiet. This is why we stop in during the church during the day to make a visit, to be with our Lord, especially in the most blessed sacrament. This means, brothers and sisters, we will learn to talk to God. We will learn to be on intimate terms with Him and, dare say, we will learn to be friends with Him. He yearns for that real friendship. He yearns for us to give Him His all, our all. Let us then, brothers and sisters, make a firm resolve to be open to God working in our life, to become those friends of God, and ultimately to get to heaven. One of the classic definitions of a saint is one who is friends of God. Let us be friends of God then, brothers and sisters, all the way to heaven. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.